so today we're gonna do a true test of how good this microphone does at blocking wind noise because it is pretty dang windy out. We've got a uh, front moving in. This is our last nice 70 degree day, which I can't really complain because it's November and I was wearing flip flops yesterday. So that's always nice, but we got a front moving in. It's gonna cool down in the 40s and I think we're pretty much done for decent weather. So that being said, it's gonna be a little windy out today and that's okay. Uh, I'm back over at my buddy, the farmers, uh, and we're gonna extend his lot some more. I don't know if you guys recall the video that I did a little while back of me dozing some millings for him. Well, he's got a lot more millings and we're gonna put them down. So here's the parking lot that we're talking about. We got a little low area right here. Uh, I went across the street. They've got a bunch of fill dirt because farmers are never short on dirt. So I'm gonna blend this in, kind of fill in the low spot. And then we're gonna come back over here grab from this pile of millings, blow them in here. So basically this whole area here is gonna be covered with millings. So this should only be a couple hour project, maybe, I don't know, three hours or so. But unfortunately, I have to go help Rick later pour some concrete. So this is gonna be a multi-day project for me because I can only work at it for a couple hours here and there. So let's go grab the dozer. We're gonna flatten those piles. And then we're gonna jump in a loader start carting some millions over. I'll catch you guys here in a machine in just a second. All right, we're catting over to where we need to go. need more dirt so what I'm doing is I'm starting you know I push that first blade of material out here but I'm starting from my low end and I can feel whether or not I'm going uphill or downhill and so that's how I'm deciding where I need to lose the material unfortunately that's a that area is a couple inches deep so we might not have brought enough material over. I only had a couple hours yesterday to work on this, so I was totally guesstimating how much we were gonna need. And I may have been way short. Let's see if we can scrounge some more back here.
think we'll be okay. I think we just generated all the material we're gonna need because I didn't realize we were that high over there. We'll be just fine. After you run dozer for a while, you'll know, you'll get a feel for the fact that your eyes are very deceiving. You'll absolutely think you've got this perfectly flat grade or you're going downhill and pitch just the way you want to be. What you learn in a dozer is you trust your ass level, which I've talked about in previous videos what, what that is and developing your ass level, how important that is. But what you find is you get in a machine thinking you're perfectly flat and your ass level tells you different. That's kind of like this low area. I did not think we were that high in this area that I'm nosing in right now. But there's actually a fair amount of material here that we're going to work up into this low spot. Nice and slow. There's no need to go fast when you're dropping into a cut like this. It's better to go slow and be accurate. And believe it or not, taking this much material, I am still pushing uphill. I can feel that in my seat. Yesterday, um, my buddy's dad, who's 
actually in charge of the farm and wanted to see if we could make these buildings go a little further. They had gotten some some nice gravel stuff, I guess from the road commission. So I brought a couple loads of that over and mixed it in. So that's what we're going to start with. about this loader is the ride control doesn't work so it is a bit bouncy. driving forward, uh, it cuts out too early and doesn't give them the power that they want. The reality is traction control can save you thousands of dollars on tire replacements because you're not spinning in place. The machine limits you to where it starts to feel the wheel slip and then it doesn't give you any more juice. And if you're slipping, you're just rubbing rubber off of your tires. You're wearing your tires down a lot quicker. So 100% of your good loader operator, run traction control and then learn how to use the machine. I know I'm probably going to offend some guys saying that, but it is what it is, guys. You got to learn how to operate. I just power through and wear shit out. talked about this in other videos but just to recap when I go into a pile with anything as soon as I start to feel it bog and slow I'm gonna raise up on the boom to put some pressure on those front tires give me power this machine I have a trigger on this joystick that's actually uh, all-wheel differential lock so it locks all four wheels to where they're gonna drive forward so I'm gonna raise my boom up I'm gonna put that weight on the front tires and then I'm gonna click that trigger so I've got my diff locking gauge and then I'm gonna push into that pile, slowly curling my bucket and slowly raising up on it. And you can see, without any wheel spin, without wearing anything out or being rough on the machine, I've got a huge bucket. This is more material than you could ever desire to have. It's just knowing how to run the machine. Trouble is by tipping 
So, like for example, if we had our boom way up in the air, and we hit that soft spot and started to lean, if you've got your bucket full, way up in the air, you're more prone to tip. So as soon as you start to feel yourself lean one way or another, if you got that bucket in the air, your safety is to drop that bucket down and get that center of gravity low. Because once you get it in the carry position way down here, you're pretty stable. I can get on a pretty, I'm not going to say I'm going to get on the same kind of slope as a dozer, but you can get on some pretty good slopes with material and not have to worry about tipping. But if you got that bucket way up in the air with all that weight, that's where you run into problems. So just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna go up here and see if I can't maybe. Probably gonna have to get that dozer to fix this, but I'll see if I can't back up a little bit. Just a little. Ooh, that is mushy. Yes. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to get the dozer. I had no idea this was that soft with those LGP tracks. thing to keep in mind about productivity in a loader is you don't need to back a mile away from your truck you don't need to back a mile away from your pile that's just wasted time so the the goal is on let's let's say mining equipment when they're really measuring production the goal is I believe it's no more than a turn and a half of your tires when you back either away from the pile or away from the truck now in real world scenarios obviously that's not totally realistic because my dump site is not right next to where I'm getting loaded but when we back away from the pile you're going to notice for the most part I don't back a mile and a half away from it I back just enough that I can turn the loader and get out of there and then keep going and that's what you should strive for to get your cycle time up
going to do here is put down about three to four inches of milling. I don't want to go crazy. Take them super deep. 